I heard a story when I first came up to this part of the country that uh, you're from Winnipeg and uh, or at least from around in there, and that you were used to listen to records where they would overtrack guitar things, yeah. and you didn't know it, and so uh, you played one guitar part that included all that. Did did you really do, learn it that way? Oh, geez, you know, uh, like. Like, actually, that's a, just a, like, I think that's just an exaggerated story, really, that, like, somebody made up or something, because I don't remember anything like that, you know what I mean? Oh. I mean, I remember listening to Chet Atkins, you know, and saying, hey, man, you know what I mean? Like, there's something going on there, like, sounds like two dudes playing, you know what I mean? I know about that. But this story about, like, uh, Bad West Paul, so we got married, yeah. I don't know, man. I don't know how that got started, man. I don't. Re I really don't know why. You know what I mean? I think it's just a story. You know? I really, you know. Lenny, your type of music seems to be about as close to total musical freedom as you can get. And I saw you backing Ann Murray a couple of years ago, and it made me wonder if that must not be a, a restraint and a real restriction on your on your playing. Uh. There's a bit of restriction there. Sure, sure, like, there's bound to be a bit of restriction, you know. But at the same time, like, it looked like country music here are my roots, right? So I really got off playing with Ann. You know, like, like I really got off because it brought back good memories. And I still dig playing country music anyway, you dig it? So, like, uh, I was getting off on that, you know what I mean? But still, there was a certain amount of restriction there. I mean, like, I mean, it looked like absolute freedom isn't there. You know, absolute freedom is when you can just go zoom. You know, I couldn't go zoom. You know, I had to lay back a little bit, you know what I mean? But I dig it. You know, I, I really enjoyed it, but I, you know. Lenny, you've been playing that guitar now for better than 20 years, and I'm sure you've gone through a lot of changes with it. I was curious to know uh, exactly what your music represents to you by now. At this stage, at this stage, it represents uh, like a unity with with God. Like uh, like like music is God to me. You know, like when I play music, I feel the closest to God. You know what I mean? So like music, music's my religion. In other words, like uh, like you play the music. And you get a spiritual feeling, right? Now that's the closest I'm ever going to come. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can go to a church, you know. But actually, like when I play, I feel like I'm in church anyway. You know what I mean? So it's like it's becoming a very spiritual thing. Very spiritual. Like to the point where it's, where it's, it's sacred. You know, it's like a sacred thing, you know. So like, uh, people like John Coltrane, uh, people like that, you know, into that kind of jazz, like like spiritual jazz, jazz that's happening now, now music. You go out and you play what you feel, how you feel, you know. When you work up a tune or or get something ready to play it so that you're satisfied, do you do you think of it in terms of a piece of music that has to be performed in an exact way, or or do you just play it as you feel it each time you perform? Yeah, it's more like you said, damn it. Uh, it varies. It varies with with emotions. Like in other words, like like you walk up on the stand and you take a chance. You you take a chance and go out on a limb and see how your emotions are, right? And take a chance on it and just start playing. And you might just get lucky, you know what I mean? Like, like either you get lucky or like you fall apart a little bit. Like, but you try and keep it together. Try and be as honest as you can about it. And sometimes something will happen that'll never happen again. That kind of music is spiritual music. Uh, in that sense, that's the music that just happens by itself. Now, a song like, say, like, uh, like a ballad or something, a ballad, a great ballad, uh, take something like, uh, you know, like uh, people who need people or something like that. I would play it straight because it's a beautiful song, you know. I would play it straight and then I would probably stretch out on it a little bit and then go back and play it straight again because it's such a beautiful song. But at other times, I just rather make up the song as I go along. You know what I mean? Yeah. In the case where where you say you're going to try out your emotions on a tune and you don't know what you're going to play, 
it, it must put you in a very vulnerable position because you, you're going to be playing along and, and every, all your, your whole being has to, has to click to make that song do what you want to do. Do you, do you ever get out on a limb and can't get back with it if, if you're uptight or something? Uh, that has happened. That has happened. Sometimes you get out on a limb and you fall off. You fall right out and say, say, hey man, I don't know if I'm going to make it. I don't know if I'm going to make it back. But usually what happens, the other musicians help you out. You know, they'll, like, if I fall down someplace, I'll say, hey, man, you know, <laughs> where am I? <laughs> you, know, the, you know, the drummer will give me a cue or something or give me a beat to get me back on the track again. You know, somebody else gets lost, I give him a cue. So it's like, I, so it's like the band has to become one. Like, it's, you know, so instead of four cats, it's like one person. So all the minds join in together sort of thing, you know? And like if we fall down, we'll pick ourselves up right away and keep going. You know what I mean? 